Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Hearthstone Mercenaries is out and there's been quite a lot of controversy on the economy of the game. Can it be played free to play? Is this game or just purely pay to win? In this video I'm going to take a look at the free to play opportunities, the pay to win allegations and what money can actually buy in this game mode. So let's take a deep dive into the economy of Hearthstone Mercenaries. First of all, you want to level up your mercenaries. They start at level 1 and you need to get them to 30. And this process is done by playing the game. You cannot skip this with money, although money can buy some abilities already at the first level. So you can make it a little bit faster to start with. Although you will get all of those abilities as free to play also. And the leveling time, if you start a new party, it has been reported to be somewhere between 3 and 7 hours. 3 hours for PvP, mostly against AI, just winning practically every game. Or maybe 7 hours if you just play the game regularly, do some bounties and maybe PvP a little bit on the side. And that's for one party of 6 mercenaries, and there are 51 mercenaries at launch, so there are a lot of mercenaries to level up if you want to play with many of them. Technically you don't have to, but you can. However, the real grind is not even that leveling part. The real grind is upgrading the abilities and equipment of your mercenaries. And upgrading a mercenary fully, all abilities, all equipment costs up to 2700 coins per mercenary. And that's a lot of coins, by the way. Every mercenary is also going to give you a mercenary task chain, which is going to give you three packs, by the way, during the chain. And it's going to give you overall 1500 coins, 500 coins for random mercenaries, and 1000 coins for the mercenary whose task chain it is. So the task chain helps, especially because the abilities have diminishing returns. You mostly need the abilities to get to level 3, level 5 is the maximum, but levels 4 and 5 are smaller upgrades than levels 2 and 3. And upgrading all abilities to level 3 for a single mercenary costs 475 coins, so you would get all of those coins from the mercenary task chain already. As for the remaining coins that you still need afterwards, you can target some specific bounties and get coins for that mercenary more likely. And you can obviously buy packs. As a downside, if you get random coins, then there is no protection. There's nothing that stops if you have a maxed up mercenary, you will keep getting coins for that mercenary as well. So you will end up with some useless coins in the end. But this is indeed where money can help you because packs. One pack gives you a bunch of coins. One pack, if it's purely a coin pack, you don't get a new mercenary from the pack. Compared to just running bounties, one pack is worth around 20 minutes of your time if you were to do the free-to-play grind. And for any mercenaries that you open from the pack, it's worth a lot, a lot more. But once you have opened all the rare mercenaries, you're not getting that many mercenaries anymore from packs anyway. But you can see from this, like, buy three packs, that's an hour. 30 packs, 10 hours. Obviously that's only towards a full collection, because you can do more targeted farming for specific mercenaries, whereas packs just give you random stuff for all mercenaries. I find it really fascinating how the daily system is completely different in mercenaries than it is in regular Hearthstone. In regular Hearthstone, doing your daily quest is like the most important thing. You just want to do your dailies, you want to do your weeklies, it's a disaster if you miss your quests. Whereas regularly just playing the game isn't nearly as important. In Mercenaries it is the exact opposite. There's only one daily quest, maintaining the timeline. But while you do get mercenary tasks in your daily slots, there are other ways to proc mercenary tasks you're not reliant on getting them daily. And maintaining the timeline, the daily quest that you get, 50 random coins. So this basically means complete two bounties. You run two bounties and you get rewards for around three bounties. It's not even that great of a deal. The really big thing is task farming. Tasks take those daily quest slots, but after you have completed the tasks that you get daily, you can start farming new ones. People are especially doing the Air Elemental Heroic bounty in Barons, the level 7 Heroic, because the level 7 Heroic is the fastest way to gain access to guaranteed mystery nodes. And in a mystery node, there is a chance to roll a Mysterious Stranger. And whenever you get a Mysterious Stranger, that means that you're going to get a task for one of the mercenaries in your party. So simply farming this, completing these tasks means that you can complete tens of tasks in a day. Tens of daily quests every single day if you want. But I know people who have already in a few days found mercenaries that are at maximum level and fully upgraded. So the mercenaries economy is the complete opposite of the Hearthstone economy. You are not rewarded for logging in daily, you are rewarded for hours that you put into the game. So there is a level of mandatory grinding for everyone to level up your mercenaries and then you want to upgrade your mercenaries and you do that either by grinding, grinding, grinding or by buying a lot of packs. 
But if you are dedicated enough to mercenaries, you can actually get all of your mercenaries maxed out without spending a dime, which is something that you cannot do with regular Hearthstone. No matter how much you play, it's just you're capped with the amount of gold you can get. And in mercenaries you are not. If you put in enough hours, you can just get everything. At the other end of the spectrum, if you spend a boatload of money on this mode, you can just get enough coins to upgrade all of the mercenaries, so you only need to level and then everything is fully maxed. Or if you want to do something in between, for example, if you bought the pre-order package for 50 packs, that gave you enough coins to upgrade most of your mercenaries either to level 2 or level 3 abilities. And getting a bit of a head start on those abilities just makes those mercenaries much more fun to play. So that's one perfectly viable path in the game as well. Getting a bit of coins in advance so that you get a bit of a head start so that those mercenaries become more effective for grinding. Finally, a couple of words about the mercenaries themselves. I see a lot of people saying that there are some really overpowered legendary mercenaries in this game, and some of those legendary mercenaries are really, really powerful. They can be hard to find in a pack, and then, well, you can grind coins, grinding specific bounties to get coins to craft them, but that's also going to take ages. However, the starting legendaries are not all bad at all. For example, Carrier Rome, Blademist Samuro, and Xerala are all top tier mercenaries, and these are all free starter mercenaries. So when you're starting to level up your first team, you probably want to include these three in that team so that you get them to max level and they are just very, very strong. Furthermore, there are other mercenaries too which are strong and not that expensive. For example, the Nature Synergy mercenaries, Brukan, Gaff Rune Totem, Lady Anacondra. All of these are rares, these are not your starter legendaries, but these are perfectly fine. Sure, they're a little bit missing Malfurion, which is a legendary, but these three can get a lot of things done. So even as a free-to-play player, you can immediately start putting together a good team, and you can grind out the entire game. So in that sense, the game is not pay to win. You can get absolutely everything in this game without investing a dime. Putting in one triple A game worth of money into this game makes it a little bit easier, because then you get some abilities unlocked at the start and you have a bit of an easier time. Overall, just a more pleasant experience. And putting in a boatload of money allows you to skip most of the grind. But yeah, a very interesting economy model in this game, because it's ultimately not hard-gated by time, and ultimately you can get everything for free, but it does require a fairly gargantuan effort. Make of that what you will, but I think it's much better than people generally are giving it credit for. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Twitch channel.